hi friends welcome to the first um reading vlog for the book club pick of the year i wanted to start doing this because i know that a lot of people can't make the lives um even though i save them on instagram um i wanted you guys to at least be able to also see me like giving my reactions as i'm reading the book um so that you just get more information about the book and seeing how I enjoyed it when you can't join the live and all of that. So I will be doing this every month for the book club picks. They will go out the first of every month, um, which is also the same day that I am doing the book discussions on the YouTubes. So if you would like to hear it, here we go. <laughs> Okay, so I am listening to From Scratch um, because I saw that it was read by the author and I usually really enjoy memoirs when they are read by the author. Um, so I wanted to listen to it and it's probably the best decision that I've made. Um, not that reading it wasn't also entertaining because I did read a few pages, um, but listening, it, listening to it, I feel like I'm talking to like I'm on the phone with my friend um so I've listened to two chapters so far and I'm definitely enjoying listening to the book more than I am listening than I was when I watched like the first two episodes of the show so she the prologue like starts out with her um talking about how she went back to Italy to distribute some of his ashes where he had asked her to and my initial thoughts listening to that prologue is ain't that the audacity of a man to make you fall in love with him and then die <laughs> like of all the things he could have did die sir and now I got to raise this baby without her daddy and you want me to go back to Italy to your mama in them house that don't like me to distribute your ashes sir hello um but i'm really liking like her insights i think what the show doesn't provide is like her thought processes on like what what she was doing and how she was feeling and like how he made her felt and her adjustment to Italian culture. So she talks about, you know, going there for school and meeting him and falling in love <laughs> on accident, but also how she um, did not intend on doing that. And she was like very, very much against it um, because she just didn't, I, it's like self growth and like all of this inner work that you have to do to allow somebody to love you. And like her talking about what her idea of love was prior to moving to Italy. Um, and like all of these things that she thought she had to do or she thought she had to say um, because of her like cultural upbringing I want to say like how she was raised in America and in Texas you know we do things a certain way whatever whatever that was kind of like interfering with what she knew of love and all of that sort of thing so that was really interesting to me um I'm curious to see where else the story goes and I thought that I was going to be like have a hard time getting through the book because I like I already know the story like I already know that the man gonna die I mean never mind the fact that she tells us that in the beginning of the in the beginning of the show I mean a beginning of the in the prologue like obvious but like I already knew what I already knew what was going to happen um, so I thought that I wasn't going to be able to enjoy, enjoy it as much. Um, but I'm enjoying listening to her story and like her life through her own eyes. Um, 
I, I think that's really cool. So once I listen to some more and all of that, I will be back. I'm sorry I made y'all read this book. I'm sorry. I, I apologize. <laughs> oh, I apologize. Um, listening to her talk about um, her daughter, you know, taking their daughter to see him um, and knowing that this will possibly be the last time that her baby saw her father. Woo! I think it is um, hitting me in the chest more than usual because, you know, my mom was sick last year and <sighs> leaving that hospital at every night, like leaving her there was some of the hardest shit that I had to do every night. I hated it. I did not like it, um, especially when there were bits of uncertainty and it seemed like every day she was declining um I'm like oh what if I come back and she ain't here <laughs> it was not a good time so that was um that just hurt my feelings a little bit but um I am enjoying listening to her tell this story. I'm enjoying it a lot. Um, watching your person be sick is, is so, so hard. Before I go into the store, um, I am so inspired by Timby Locke and how she talks about helping her seven-year-old um, in this process. And like, being able, like trying to figure out how to like make space for herself to grieve, but also knowing that this is life altering for her kid and knowing that like later on down the line, like her kid could react completely differently to her own memories and all of that stuff that's really inspiring I think so many people just ignore children and their feelings and then wonder why we all grow up to have to do with all this trauma is because people were ignoring you and treating you like you didn't know anything and like you didn't feel anything when we need to be making space for children okay okay I'm about to start eating dinner so I thought I'd give you guys a little update from scratch um, I really feel like this book should be like a therapy must read I also think that it should be a must read for people in interracial relationships um because the way that I don't think there's anything that can can prepare you I was for whatever reason I'll say compare you <laughs> anything that really can compare you there I go prepare you for the way that his family acted right and how they figured out a way to let their love persevere and raise their kid and whatever um I think that's really important because I don't know that I would have let somebody marry me knowing that that meant that they would lose their family. Oh, let me turn the TV down because somebody said that it was distracting in another video. Um, I'm also enjoying the bits of like her and her mother-in-law figuring out how to coexist. I think Timby and Sato figured out how to push through, but she's, I'm sure in the moment she didn't feel like it was graceful, but she is like gracefully trying to figure out all while understanding that like, she's not the only person that's grieving. Her seven-year-old is grieving. 
she's grieving and her mother-in-law is grieving and like making space for their culture even though it's different and it's uncomfortable like she's doing this on the heels of love and I don't think we talk enough about love in a positive light about how transformative it could be like I don't think that she would have been able to survive all of this had her husband's love not been so passionate and consistent throughout their relationship so I I, I, I admire that um they also are really strong for adopting while he was going through like chemo and stuff like that it was like this man had incredible foresight and knew what he wanted and didn't let anything not even cancer get in the way of that that's powerful that is like really really powerful but i really do feel like this book should be a must read you gonna cry because i don't think i've ever cried this much listening to a book like i want to love and to be loved in a way that's transformative i want to come across my person and understand that in order to love them i'm gonna have to adjust a little bit right that it's okay that this is outside of my comfort zone in so many ways right um but like i said i just don't know like the bit where they were about to get married and sorrow was just like well i learned a lot with my last relationship and he was talking about how he was in he his girlfriend was from I forget where he said but it's like a part of italy but he was like yeah but she wasn't sicilian so his his parents took it as she was excuse me another race completely but excuse me and like that was crazy to me that was crazy to me um and like the way that his family was so like, oh, we got to listen to what daddy says. But then it was also endearing. That like some of his family figured out how to get to the wedding, you know, and how the other visit that they did, like they fi they figured it out, like his mom made a way or whatever. That was that was cool. That was really cool. But I, I really think it's like you fall in love with somebody. Don't come over here after my food. Hey, Y'all friend trying to sniff my plate. I'm not sharing with you. Um, go lay down. Um But like their culture comes with them just like your culture comes with you like there are things about you that you will want people to honor and respect or people in your life that you will want to honor and respect and to just know that like i just wouldn't be okay knowing that i'm the reason your family is not talking to you i would want whoever to pick their family over me because you can fall in love again. Ooh, that was another part that, that hit me in my chest when she was like, you know, when Saro knew that he was dying and he was like, you, you deserve to love again. Like your love is too good to end with me. You, you have to go on, sir, sir. 
So, I think I have about three hours left in the audiobook, which I will listen to the rest of tomorrow. Excuse me. Um, and yeah. I'm very curious. I, I can't wait to, to to see like what the ending of it is. I will say I do listen to my audiobooks on like between like 1.3 and 1.5 speed. Um hello neural spicy. Um so when I say I have three hours left, keep that in mind. Um, but I am really enjoying the audiobook. I think something that's important in audiobooks is the person's voice. And I, I don't think that it, it it's harmful that Timby, excuse me, Locke is an actress. Like, she is so eloquently telling this story. I, I feel like this will end up being a comfort listen to me eventually. Like, once I get over the heartbreak and the all the crying that I did. Um, another part that I wanted to talk about real quick is um, their first summer in in Italy with her mother-in-law and oh when that baby was saying she was like I'm gonna stop loving him because I miss him and being here makes me miss him and that hurts oh oh I was maybe 11 or 12, uh, maybe 10. I was 10 or 11 when my great grandmother passed away. And I remember being a kid and not really understanding and, and, and it was just, it was hard. That part, that, that made me think of little Shelby who spent so much time with her great grandmother and just wanted her back. Um but for a seven year old to have to go through that is so like it's hard to grieve as an adult and I think I've said this already it's hard to grieve as an adult <sighs> with all the things that we know at our big ages, right? I can only imagine what's that what that's like for a little kid. Like, you don't understand. Why would this person that has loved me in so many ways leave me? And when Timby was trying to say to her, like, baby, he was sick for a very long time. And he tried really hard. That also, I can only imagine as a little kid, has to be like, well, he did not try hard enough. Excuse me. So, and like, even Timby talking about navigating that, like... You know, her daughter being like, you know, I wish it was you and not, she didn't call him dad, she called him Babo. I wish it was you instead of Babo. Like, that had to hurt her, but she also understands that this little baby is trying to figure out how to live without her dad. All while she's trying to figure out how to live without her husband, baby. Mm. But yeah, that baby heard that part. I was just like, children are so incredibly smart and so incredibly deep. And they feel the same way that we do. They just don't have the language. And to be seven years old and to be able to say, to have to grow up quickly enough to be able to say, I'm going to stop loving my babo because that hurts me. I'm sure she grown now, but I would like to go hug her seven year old self. Ooh, I'm eating dinner again as I give y'all the final update from four from scratch. I think often my issue with memoirs is that there's always like, oh, this bad thing happened to me. Then they had this come into some sort of religion moment. Um, the religion 
save them from their oh so terrible life and this was not like that at all timby lock very gracefully um told her story right she she fell in love he died and then she had to continue to pick up the pieces not only for herself but for her daughter as well which can be not can be which is extremely hard i think the part that i love the most is that it is a story of hope right that even though in the beginning of their relationship his his parents weren't really acceptive of them and although it took her father-in-law and her husband passing away for her and her mother-in-law to really build the bond that was like wow so great in the end i really it's, it's it's about hope it's about womanhood right it's about um this one i don't like recording out here because you go act a donkey if that's the last thing you do um it's about like womanhood right like these two women had to figure out how to navigate grief together and then also figuring out how to navigate grief for a little girl who lost her dad um i really really love this story and i really 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 would recommend it to everybody i think it's a must read i think especially for people that are in interracial relationships i think it'll kind of give you a guideline for <laughs> go play with your granny um not necessarily a guideline i should take that back but it'll i think it's something that's really relatable um in so many ways and i think for a lot of people that may be in interracial interracial relationships and don't see light at the end of the tunnel with the differences between their races could probably um relate to this book and it will give them hope i think it'll give anybody hope for any relationship um i thoroughly enjoyed it i thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed it um reading it was good but the audiobook is phenomenal so that is it i will see you guys next month for next month book club pick which is decent people by deshaun charles winslow i have it right here decent people um and i'll do the same thing it'll be another reading vlog so tell me if you read the book in the comments or if you plan to read this one um and if no one told you today i love you bye friends